And speaking from both sides of one's mouth is something that the biggest institutions, the biggest banks, and the governments do very frequently these days. Every time there is a bear market, we observe that. Numerous organizations have come out and said that cryptocurrency is dead and that no one should ever touch it. You see, we were correct. But in the background, they are setting up crucial infrastructure, controlling exchanges, and laying the foundation for a completely new cryptocurrency-based financial system. I want to give you a wonderful illustration of that in this video. These top-tier individuals are aware of our destination. They just don't want you to be aware of it. In this video, I also want to explore a debate that is taking place in the XRP community, specifically over whether or not we should concentrate just on Ripple or whether other projects that use the XRP ledger are more crucial to price growth. I'll discuss that and then just briefly touch on my ideas regarding this. I simply wanted to share my opinions on it as it has actually caused a significant rift in this community. So I'll start with the content of this video that has generated the most debate, whether or not we should concentrate on Ripple to drive up the price of XRP or other initiatives based on the XRP ledger. This topic has generated a lot of discussion because XRP's price appreciation has been so baffling that no one has been able to really pin down the source. Every time Ripple makes a significant news, I feel like the price of XRP should go up, but doesn't. On the XRP ledger, dozens to hundreds of projects have also been developed. Even still, there hasn't been much of a rise in XRP's price. So many members of the XRP community have been complaining that Ripple is the focus of too much attention. They aren't paying enough attention to the XRP ledger projects that are developing. And for this reason, the price of XRP hasn't actually increased. Now, I'm not saying that King Solomon or Panamus are stating this. They are absolutely correct when they emphasize how crucial it is to concentrate on the XRP ledger itself. But all I want to talk about is the general conversation that is going on around these issues. So let's quickly discuss something I recently learned that I find to be really intriguing. If we only look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap, Bitcoin is the most valuable cryptocurrency by market cap, but no one is investing in it. Now let's look at Ethereum, the second ranked cryptocurrency. Many individuals are developing on Ethereum. Hence, one in two, whether or not people are building on it has little bearing on the market cap. Since Bitcoin is the best, no one is constructing on it. On Ethereum, a ton of people are developing. It ranks second and is the benchmark for development. So are developers a key factor in a cryptocurrency's price growth? We can even move down a few places, therefore I don't believe it to be the case. Then we come upon Dogecoin. Nobody is constructing on Dogecoin. Additionally, it is the eighth cryptocurrency, ahead of the second most developer-heavy project, Polkadot. Therefore, I'm not arguing that we shouldn't concentrate on developers, nor am I even saying that I don't think creating initiatives for these networks or developers is necessary. It is crucial in my opinion. I believe that will raise the cost of XRP in the long run. It just intrigues me so much. If you look at market cap today, these cryptocurrencies truly don't reflect that we have the largest cryptocurrency available. It still has the largest market cap despite no projects being built on it. The most advanced projects, however, seem unable to move forward. Projects that are not progressing. Simply said, I found that to be a rather intriguing dichotomy. My own opinion is that the XRP ledger's price will eventually rise as it becomes more widely used. I believe that all of those factors, whether it be Ripple, smaller initiatives, or just us using and investing in XRP in our daily lives, will raise the price of XRP. For me personally, the main reason I concentrate on Ripple and the XRP ledger rather than many of the other initiatives is simply that I currently consider many of these smaller projects to be quite dangerous. I'm pretty thrilled about some of them because they're doing some very great things. Due to the fact that they are microcap coins, I'm hesitant to discuss them on this channel. They don't have many users, their founders aren't well known, they don't have a history, and the Bitcoin industry is already a risky place to be in. A blue chip cryptocurrency with a high level of volatility is XRP. Therefore, I simply choose to be a little more circumspect. In a bear market, these projects need all the attention they can get right now, so I'm greatly looking forward to the day when I can talk more about them. Simply put, I don't feel confident promoting many of them. And even if they may be doing stuff that I find really exciting, I'd actually prefer to concentrate on Ripple right now since it is the XRP ledger project that is the most institutionally ready. However, I want to go on and sort of move on to something I think is quite intriguing, which is how the most influential institutions in the world view cryptocurrencies. Since the beginning of time, Christine Lagarde and the IMF have maintained that we shouldn't pay attention to cryptocurrencies since they won't affect our financial system. But all I want to do is demonstrate to you how they use both sides of their mouths. Christine Lagarde, who also said that cryptocurrencies would not find a home in our financial system, stated that the banking system was changing four years ago as a result of cutting-edge innovations like digital currencies. 
The same woman has also stated in an interview that initiatives like Circle and Ripple will be essential to transforming the financial system. Since this happened four years ago, perhaps her opinions have evolved. The IMF's Georgie, however, defended cryptocurrencies following the most recent crash because they are speedier and less expensive, according to a post that Megan recently uncovered. The key point I'm trying to make here, and I believe it's crucial, is that cryptocurrencies are the new guiding principles of our financial system. They are vastly more effective, quicker, and less expensive, and all the major institutions are aware of this. Simply said, retail beat them in, which is why they spread so much FUD and attempt to claim things like, oh, they're going away. They're not going to have a place. Retail was able to gain exposure to this asset class before these players in one of the few cases out there. And as a result, they are unable to construct these structures in plain view. They can't just declare, oh, we're going to use XRP, because it would obviously drive up the price. They must have the ability to strengthen their position from the back end. They must be able to develop their systems covertly and pray that retail won't catch on. Because of this, if we catch them making a mistake, we see that they frequently meet with Ripple and mention it in their paperwork. Because they understand that this is where the future lies. They are aware that these are the technologies that will change the way the system works, but they are unable to tell us. If they inform us, we simply outpace them. We defeated them. These new advances were typically concentrated in the financial structures we've had in the past, which meant that they could essentially shut us out. They were in a position to assert, okay, we're building these things, we're investing in these things, but you can't touch them until already has the entire stock market. These businesses and organizations finance private equity. They claim that you are not accredited, so you cannot in. As soon as they are prepared, they release their holdings onto the open market. They would have wanted to have done this with cryptocurrencies, but they were unable to do so due to their decentralized and permissionless nature. They have to go out of their way to fund cryptocurrencies as a result. They should make an extra effort to act as though they won't utilize them or find them acceptable in the system we're moving toward. However, they are speaking in the background and saying things like this, which we can hear since they are aware that it is the future. Just keep in mind that this is not some American publication. This would never be published in America. A South China Morning Post is present. Other nations are much more open about how they discuss these issues. People any place else in the world that you speak to are aware of the shift taking place in the background. It's just that they really attempt to FUD this information and keep us out, especially in the United States. Like I mentioned, the only reason they waste their time doing that and spreading this FUD is because they truly believe they must. They wouldn't even bring up the subject if it were truly just a burger and nothing to worry about. They would squander their time doing that. We don't even need to address this, they say, brushing it aside. Instead, they're continuously spreading false information and attempting to frighten people since they know we're intelligent enough to understand what's going on. They are aware that we can perceive the change. As they complete the last procedures necessary to implement these technologies, they are attempting to put it off as long as they can. But in the end, I believe we all know what will happen. And perhaps most crucially, we are all aware of the businesses who stand to gain the most. It's the team members who have been with these men from the beginning. As circles, ripples, and those who have concentrated on regulation are now concentrating on really carrying out the proper procedures. And for this reason, I have such faith that organizations like Ripple and digital assets like XRP will succeed in the long run. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.